Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Historic District Commission agenda of the uh, meeting of October 28th, 2015. Uh, let us proceed by taking a uh, roll at this time, starting with Ms. Schwartz. Trudy Schwartz. I'm Frank Johnson, Assistant City Attorney. John Roddy. Mark Feinstein. Dean Ventola. Chris Berger. At this time, let me give you a preliminary statement. This commission is empowered to meet and act under Article 12 of the City Code of the Gaithersburg. The technical qualifications of the staff of this commission and its members of the commission are on file with the City of Gaithersburg. They are available upon request to any applicant and are hereby made part of the record, the legal record of each and every application heard today. Each application heard today is considered on its own merits and is not to be considered as establishing a precedent for any other application. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Johnson, I believe we are short by one of a, uh, a legal quorum. Can we address the minutes at this time without... Uh, um, if you have a majority here who were present and can vote on that, um, it is, we've had a few instances where we've gone ahead and had the minutes approved in that kind of a situation. If not, it's probably better just to wait until you do have a, are you? All right, for the record, I, I would have to abstain since I was not here at the last meeting, so addressing the minutes would... Uh, I was, I I was out also, so it would only be one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all up to me. We'll have to <laughs> Let me think. Do I like those minutes or not? <laughs> all right. Well, it would seem to me to be expeditious to address the courtesy review on our agenda first, flip-flop, and then hope that uh, Chris and uh, Mary Jo can get here promptly. And the weather may be holding Oh, I'm sure the, the weather has a lot to do with it. So, yeah. So if, if it's all right with uh, everyone else, we'll uh, take up the uh, courtesy review at this time rather than just sit around and uh, Wait. look busy. <laughs> okay, if you'll give me just a moment. Certainly. I'll pull up my staff presentation. The nonprofit Identity Inc. seeks to construct a freestanding 1,440 square foot um, building behind their existing building at 414 East Diamond Avenue. This application comes before the HDC because the addition is located in Old Town, which is a courtesy review area. Section 24-2274 of the city code specifies the following with respect to courtesy reviews. And it's gonna be under subsection B, you're gonna be looking at architectural compatibility, including such elements as signs, masonry, and architectural details, width and height of buildings and structures, roof, door, and window styles, and other elements contained within the adopted guidelines of the HDC. Um, number two, the effect or impact upon the preservation and protection of buildings, structures, or districts designated historic, and three, the effect or impact upon historic appurtenances and environmental settings related to B above. This is the existing building on the property. Um, it was built circa 1905 and it's known as the Burn King House. It's a two and a half story full Victorian building that measures 2,148 square feet. Um, Identity currently uses the building for offices. An asphalt shared driveway is located to the west of the building. And four parking spaces are located just to the north with 18 additional parking spaces at the extreme north end of the property. So I took these photos last week. Here's the four parking spaces just to the north. Here's the property from the north, ele the north elevation of the building. This grassy area is where they propose to build the 1,440 square foot addition. Here's another view of that grassy area. Here's a shot from the far north parking area. 
and here's that same parking area. In 2011, Identity received approval for the construction of a new building on the property as part of AFP 11030. HDC reviewed the plans and made recommendations to Planning Commission that the project was never built. And the building in 2011 was proposed to go on this location, which is the same location they proposed again today. It's on that grassy area. And this is what they proposed in 2011. Now this is what they propose. This is the site plan for the current uh, proposal. The freestanding 1,440 square foot addition will be located to the north of the existing building, which is right here. And the footprint of that building is of course grass and it would measure 24 by 60 square feet. Also they propose the addition of a storage trash shed um, over in this area here. And this is, these are the elevations for the currently proposed building. It differs from the one that was approved in 2011 in that it has a, a gable roof as opposed to a barrel roof, um, board and batten siding as opposed to corrugated metal, um, asphalt shingles instead of um, metal, a metal roof. And they also propose the construction of a deck at the north end of the building here. Now that deck is um, on land that was in the city's master plan as a master plan road. And so Identity will agree to remove that deck should the city ever plan to build that road. <coughs> and here's the floor, pan, floor plan for the proposed building in the decks. And this is the plan for the, the trash shed. And our, the architect, uh, Gabriel Romero, is here if you have any questions. The trash is uh, seven feet by five feet, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And it'll be, have a roof on top. Gabe, you want to Mr. Romero, do you want to say anything uh, prior to uh, any questions from the panel? Good evening, yes. My name is Gabriel Romero with Architect Studio. Thank you. Um, thank you for for taking you know for, for listening to to identities plea. Um, I apologize. We have a little bit of technical difficulties with my presentation, but I, I gotta have to commend Chris. His presentation hit all the points that I, that we wanted to make. As you know, um, and just for for disclosure, I am also one of the um, members of the board of Identity. Um, identity moved here in 2003 in Montgomery County um, and our mission um, and identity is to serve Latino youth to empower them to to reach the highest levels that they can be um, and in that mission we've uh, um, worked closely with uh, the public school system and with local um, governments um, to run a whole bunch of youth centers um, and after school programs uh, the headquarters of Identity is located right here in downtown Gaithersburg, and as, as Chris mentioned, the existing um, building, which is a beautiful Victorian house, um, it, it, we're, we're presently using it as an office building, um, and we're overflowing a little bit, hence the idea for, for, the, for the expansion of the rear. The idea of the, of the expansion of the rear really is, um, it, it's really keeping in tradition with the Victorian and the agrarian um, history that Gatesburg has and, and you know and continues to have as part of its identity, and I think that this um, that this one-story building really plays a lot with, in keeping with on, not only that but with sector of exterior standards regarding new structures adjacent a historic building. Um, the intent is really to make an office building that, in a lot of ways looks very much like um, one of the outbuildings that you would have found at, at the turn of the century for these type of buildings. Um, well, while we're still, still is very modern, we'll, we intend to, to make it a lead building. Uh, we intend to use it, uh, to use a lot of modern materials, but in a very economical way, being very respectful of the neighborhood. Hopefully that, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have on. <coughs> Commissioner Ventola, do you have uh, any inquiries? 
Yeah, I have um, uh, a few basic ones. I mean, my biggest um, issue is I like how you were saying that you you believe that this building should be reflective of the neighborhood, reflective of the community, reflective of reflective of the um, Victorian architecture. All of which I agree, um, and I, I I agree with you and think it should be uh, designed that way. But I'm looking at your elevations, and I don't see any of that. Uh, put into use. So could you help me and, and, and tell me uh, how you believe this looks compatible with the neighborhood and the Victorian architecture that is there? The, the Victorian architecture was really a, a period of um, where we celebrated a lot of the millwork and the prefabricating aspect of it. What, um, what this building tries to do is not to be Victorian in, in, the, in mimicking Victorian architecture. It should not be like that. It should be a differential building, given the glory to the two-story house, to, the, to what we call it identity, our pink house. And that this building should not call attention to itself, it should be very similar to a lot of the rear additions that exist in most of the neighborhoods in, in Gaithersburg in, in situations like this. It's almost like a, the garage should not overtake the main house. And, and so the idea over here was to really use a lot of agrarian elements uh, the board and batten, which in, in, in real life, what we intend to do is to use um, um, a cementitious material, something like hardy plank with the, with the battens. Um, you know, until you get until about a couple of feet or even touch it, you won't know that it's wood and it's very long lasting. We, we need to, um, we want to make this building last a very long time. But if we, we don't want to be Victorian in that respect. We want to be very referential, differential to giving, giving the building, the main house, it's, it's due credit and it's due history. Well, I can say you are very different um, from the uh, Victorian architecture and the neighborhood. Um, but that to me is not in keeping with your opening statement. Um, it's actually quite the opposite of it. Um, I. Uh, are you open to, here, here are, I guess, um, because this is an inquiry session, um, I guess I won't go into any details yet of my, uh, my further concerns as part of our discussion period, but are you open to um, changing things such as uh, roof pitch, and are you open to changing things such as the uh, siding? To, uh, from board and batten to a more traditional lap sign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Very good. All right. And then I have no further questions. Sure. Commissioner Feinstein. Sure. I'd like to start off by first saying, I think what you what you presented to tonight versus the previous presentation is a substantial improvement, in in, in my eyes, rather than the, the basically the the aluminum sided. Um, veneer of the other one I do I mean I, I understand what you're saying about kind of this is akin to a, a garage to a to a Victorian house that was um, I guess of the neighborhood so I understand what you're saying there and it's not supposed to represent the uh, the true um, mimic not supposed to mimic the existing house which makes makes sense to me I do find the the board and batten slightly distracting I, and I think a lap siding would perhaps be more appropriate okay um, the pitch of the roof it doesn't bother me as much it's as a garage building if that's what we're kind of considering this as it's well is it a garage building it's not going to be used as a garage building. that's, but that's my point that's but that's it's my point. but where it's located on the, on the property it's in the location where a typical garage building would would go are you willing to study the, the pitch of the roof? I, I do want to be cautious about the proportions, uh, the, the form of this thing. The, the, the fact that it has certain width and a certain length to it. Um, Victorian architecture, it, you know, it, we, could, we could do it um, a little bit more in keeping with, for example, the pitch of the roof of, of um, the train station, which is a bit, it's a bit taller and, mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe do an, a, a bit of an overhang. So it's just to create some shadows on the on the eaves. Uh, one one oh. issue with that, though, is you really can't do that so much on the rear because of the fire code. Correct. Correct. 
One of the issues is that, is that we, we're in a very limited site, and we've met with staff and we met with court enforcement. Um, we are, you know, in order to make this building fit within the little bit of land that we have, we're, we're making it fit almost to the line, mm -hmm. and, and the, the east elevation, the entire wall and up to four feet of the roof are going to be fire rated pieces. So that's what drove a lot of, a lot of the, um, the form making here. So that's why there's no windows on the one side. Correct. Correct. Same thing. Um, the 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 uh, house on 414 uh, East Diamond, the front house, um, that appears to be on the front gable. I would guess at least the 1212. I, I don't think it's even steeper than that. But what is the pitch on your front gable? We're at, at um, five to twelve. Yeah, that that even 812 is so shallow. 512 to me seems so flat. Um, so I, I I'm hoping you would um, uh, think further on the on the gable and do you have any questions uh, I'm delighted to say for the record that uh, the appearance of Commissioner LaFrance gives us a, uh, a quorum this evening do you have any uh, good evening comments or questions on this yes I agree with the comments that I've just heard I would like to see this building appear to be an outbuilding to the original house if that's possible and maybe our architect professionals here might have some suggestions as far as giving him the size that he needs, but also having a building that conforms to a pier, thank you, that it had, it meets with the property in the sense of materials, style, and mass. I think that's what I'm hearing, and I agree with that strongly. But can we help? Maybe city sure. staff can help. Sure, come up with some. Period, I guess we can. Yeah, that's. I would feel strongly about that too, and materials, of course. And that's all I have. All right. I, I have nothing to add. I I do agree. Uh, Mr. Berger, where, where do you want to go from here? Um, well, I will prepare a memo with your advice to Planning Commission. That's the next step for this project. Do we want to have more discussion about? I do. Yes. What do we want to say? Because what I was trying to do is respect the concept of inquiry period mm -hmm. um, before we discuss uh, this. Open up to discussion. All right. Do you want to discuss now? Sure. Absolutely. Have at it, sir. Okay. Um, the, I I agree. Uh, also with the concept that this should be a secondary building. There's no doubt in my mind it, it, it should be. Um, it can't ever overtake this house no matter how, how hard it tries. Uh, the position of the house, the size of the house, the structure of the house, the uh, antiquity of the house, the style of the house, all of that is um, um, strong and bold and, and a garage should not overtake a main house. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, however, uh, it's in my opinion that a garage that is part of a house should respect the style of the house. It should look as if it is a community, uh, part of, um, uh, in addition to the house, should be respectful of the house. Um, clearly we can tell, and, and I know the Secretary of Interior Standards requires that it does not duplicate the house. We want to see differentiation, but there's a huge difference between high Victorian and low Victorian, or high Victorian and a building that um, picks up many of the principles of the Victorian. My point being is that um, in many ways here, it appears to me that the design, the massing, the style, the materials, are all completely different than what's surrounding it, which is all Victorian architecture. So I would suggest um, that you would um, be more reflective of it and, and, and not trying to go high Victorian, but be very similar to it. And, and the ways I would do it is, is as follows. Um, the pitch of the roof is always a strong um, indication of style. Um, the more flat a roof is, or the flatter roof is, the more modern and contemporary it is. And so I would tend to think that a 512 pitch is, is, is way too low, even for uh, inexpensive um, um, uh, uh, residential architecture at 812 is what they would usually knock it down to. So five is even less than that. So I would 
venture to suggest um, at least go, at, at, if this is 512, at least go to A12. Um, the cross gables, um, it, it appears to be even less than the 512. If, if their main gable is 512, these appear to be much less, maybe 312 or 412. I would increase the cross gables significantly, make those 1012 or 1112. That would definitely give you more um, substance and it would show more um, uh, accentuation to a main entrance, which is always desirable. Um, the rakes that you have appear to be as thin and, and, and uh, low profile as possible. I would increase them to probably uh, six uh, inch thick, you know, one by sixes or one by eights, just to give it some character. Uh, you appear, it appears, maybe I'm misreading it, that you don't have any overhang, um, which... It, it certainly, if it's there, it, it's minimal, and I would suggest going with something a little bit um, uh, more substantial. That would tend to keep water away from the building anyway, which is why they used to do it. Uh, but it would be more in keeping with what um, the more traditional architecture would be. Um, your uh, large uh, circular vent, I'm not sure if it's um, uh, an actual event or something that's going to be picked, you know, just uh, put on as an applique. But that's very imageable in itself. And I don't see it really being um, reflective of the original house. Um, I would probably say go towards one of those details, which I think was just a rectangle. There are rectangular windows on the front elevation. You can turn that into a rectangular vent and be very much in keeping, you know, with the style that's there and, and not. Uh, be uh, contradictory to it. Um, then I think the last and probably the most important is the siding. Um, I would suggest strongly to go with uh, horizontal lap siding and it would tend to make this building be subsidiary, subservient to the main building, be in the background to the main building, be uh, the same flavor as the main building, all the things that I think you are trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I guess lastly, um, the overhang, uh, the main entry, when I'm looking at the right side and left side elevations, that seems a little bit of a mixing of styles. That is, it looks as if you are having the outlookers um, that you would see in Victorian, but you're not having the mass to hold it up. So I would tend to say perhaps save some money and, and uh, taper back the outlookers, don't have them as extended as they are, uh, it would then cause less uh, attention to the lack of thick columns that you have holding it up. It would probably make uh, it be more um, 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 corresponding to each other. Um, I, I, it, I know the inquiry period is past, but are, is the trim going to be white uh, everywhere? The intent is right now to, okay. to, to paint the entire structure white and not, not to call attention okay. to, to itself. Um, I know that Victorian architecture is very rich in color. Right. Um, and at this point, we, we, we understand that the, the existing house it, it no longer has any of that original character. Okay. Um, so the idea in, in here was just not, not to call a lot of attention to, to the building with color. Um, being, I, being a little bit more differential to what the existing house is right now. And I understand that color, you know, painting, painting the building uh, can always be done and can always be enriched. I think that we would do it in conjunction with the painting of, of the house and, mm -hmm. and not do this first. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, I tend to think that if it's a different color than the house, it will cause call, call more attention to it. So having it be similar in color to the house, I think would make it be part of uh, the house campus, uh, and and certainly with its uh, the, the the reduced size and, and scope, would certainly make it be uh, the subservient um, uh, outbuilding that you're intending. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Feinstein. As uh, as as Dean was talking, I was looking through uh, on the Google Street View some of the neighborhood uh, garages um, in the region, and basically all but one of them met the criteria that Dean laid out to a T. Um, and I think very easily and very simply you could uh, adjust the design mm -hmm. to accomplish that and without really affecting it um, in terms of cost or, uh, or, or the function. 
So I, I agree with wholeheartedly with what, what Dean had to say. And I think, it, I mean, it's the goal is to do things very subtly, just do it very subtly and not overhauling everything, but just these basic maneuvers, I think, would would make it really compatible and work really well. One of the aspects that, I, that I'd like to, to discuss with you guys is, is um, Victorian architecture in a lot of ways is, is very symmetrical. It, it, you know, when it has overhangs, it has it on both sides. Um, and I'll do, I'll do enough studies on understanding that on one side, I'm already at the limit. There will be no overhangs. Mm -hmm. So for me to move the building, it really puts into question how much land I have to make the ramp work. We, I still need to be in compliance with this is no longer residential architecture. I know we're, we're dealing with, with, a, with a residential, but it, you know, um, in terms of building permit, this is a commercial structure. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be a place of public accommodation, which means it will be in com it has to be in compliance with ADA regulations. Mm -hmm. um, so I have, a, a, you know, I'm very restricted in terms of how much room we have in here. So you um, you can't at all you can't move it to these uh, do any overhang on these. It's very difficult. Right now we couldn't. We, we cannot build past the east elevation, where where it's shown right now. There is no room for an overhang. I could explore um, certain elements of Victorian architecture which are not symmetrical, and maybe offset the gable roofs and create more of a shed kind, kind of condition. Um, yeah. But it, but um, it gets to be fussy then. Correct. And and that was the, that has been the challenge since the beginning. Here is we we just don't have enough room here. So while I understand, I and I do agree with your comments that you know overhangs and good trimming and, and you know designing would be correct. At some point, the architecture the, the, that one site drove the form so so drastically that we wanted to then not go to the Victorian element of it, but more to um, you know, to, to the agrarian aspect of it, the agrarian tradition of, of, of buildings that were built here in um, in Gaithersburg during that time, mm -hmm. not rely so much on the Victorian. That's that's the reason. That's the rationale behind it. It is very difficult to do a Victorian building without overhangs. Yeah. It becomes it becomes a yeah modern take on a Victorian building. It is. Yeah. I so I think understanding that I, I think still taking as many of those elements as you can possibly achieve would be beneficial. But, but, but we'll definitely give it a try. Yes, yeah. and I'd be happy to work with staff to yeah. to make sure that that happens. I'd be happy to work with Chris and Trudy. Um, we'll look at the siding. We'll look at the overhangs. Um, I think I can I can develop enough shadows so that um, th the benefit of this thing is that not. That, um, the east elevation is, is really not visible, mm -hmm. per se. The what people will, will experience will be more on the drive side, mm -hmm. on the west side. And, and I think we can achieve the feeling of that and the, and the, the overhangs, the shadows, the more articulate entrance, and still not having to create an overhang on the other side. Mm -hmm. Anything further? Okay. Commissioner of France. Yeah. Um, I, I basically agree with my, my colleagues. Uh, I do thank you for coming in. I hope you don't take our uh, comments negatively. Uh, Never have. This commission uh, is hoping to uh, ensure that we come up with a, a better result, and I think we all do agree that this is better than what we had uh, before us before, and uh, we're uh, pleased, and I hope that you can accommodate to, to some degree what uh, has been suggested. But thank you very much for coming. Thank you. So thank much. you. Thank you very much. Go and send what them they, we don't. We don't. What vote. they do is uh, Chris prepares a memo summarizing what they said, and we send that to you and the planning commission and stuff. And we'll work, continue to work with you to get your package ready for the commission. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Now, normally, uh, we could uh, turn to the uh, the minutes, but. Uh, as we discovered earlier, there two of us were not there at the last meeting. So, unless someone has a, a problem with it, why don't we just push that over to the next meeting and we can address it? Then it's not going to take up a great deal of time when we do address it. 
And then we'll uh, go to the uh, HIST 4647-2014 issue. Uh, before we begin, uh, does anyone have, although I can't imagine it might occur here, <laughs> any conflicts or, or uh, disclosure they wish to make? No. Very well. No. Chris, please. The HDC approved HIST 4647-2014 improvements to the side garden of the Kentlands Mansion at the March 26, 2014 meeting. Um, the historic area work permit expires on March 26 of 2016. The city would like to delay construction until fall of 2016 after the wedding season. An extension of one year would push the expiration to March 26, 2017. Um, Section 24-227 Period 1E of the city code allows the HDC to extend hops for one year. Um, Public Works Operation Administrator Sean Stevens and Kentland's Mansion Facility Manager Christy King are here if you have any questions. And I have on the screen an aerial of the Kentland's Mansion and here is the plan that was approved. Does anyone from the city other than Mr. Berger want to make any statement to gather? Oh, please. Please give us your name. Hi, good evening. My name is Christy King, and I'm the community facility manager for Countlands Mansion. My name is Sean Stevens. I'm the Public Works Operations Administrator. Is there anything you'd like to tell us? The main reason we're asking for this extension is postmodern is the company that's doing the design the engineering work for the side garden they've run into some issues with a WSSC easement which is located on that property and it's caused quite substantial delays as far as the design goes it's putting us to the point where if we proceed with the solicitation for the construction once the once the design work is done it's gonna leave us a very tight window to get the construction completed before her wedding season picks up in April mm -hmm. So we think the prudent thing to do is to delay for one year, go ahead and continue with our construction solicitation and plan with a November, approximately November 1st construction start date. And that way they'll have a full five months to get the construction completed and that will not impact their wedding season in any way. Right. But the project would, would remain as it was previously approved. We're just needing an additional time Mm -hmm. a year to be able to complete mm -hmm. the project. Ms. LaFrance? I have no problem with an extension and no questions. Mark? The same. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely no problem with the extension of time. Uh, the only thing I'm worried for on your behalf is constructing in the winter months. But you mm -hmm. think you guys already know that. But uh, mm -hmm. I have no trouble with extending it for mm -hmm. you and uh, <coughs> certainly get your wedding season underway. Thank you. And I also would tell you that uh, we liked your uh, plans the first time they were put before us. Uh, we think anything worth doing is worth doing right, and we certainly don't want to rush you or put you into a, a bad season for doing it. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, so move. I move that um, HIST 4647-2014 be approved for the extension of time for an additional one year. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And four to nothing. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. You too. I think we have uh, next is the uh, staff updates. Yes. Um, before we get to the ones listed, I wanted to inquire about the availability of the commissioners who are here tonight for Wednesday, um, December 16th. We may, we don't have a meeting scheduled for December, but we may have an application come in um, that would need to be approved as quickly as possible so they can move forward. So I wanted to see if we had a quorum before we could even get to that point. Um, it's not for certain that it'll be in on time, but we want to prepare just in case. I'm available. Yeah. I don't have this car as I don't know of. I'll have to check my calendar, but I'm pretty sure. I'll okay, I'll send an email out to everyone as well. Yeah. I haven't got my orders yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just, we just wanted to make sure no one was going to be traveling to the Panama Canal or any place like that. 
No one does that. <laughs> um, and all along the same lines, I sent out the um, the meeting calendar for 2016 with the the planned dates. As you know, to happen with this meeting, sometimes meet dates get moved around a bit. But this is what we're planning on for 2016. If anyone would like a paper copy, I can provide that as well. Next, where you where you were? Here. Oh, next door. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And moving on to the historic preservation master plan element. Um, the master plan was last updated in 2007. So we are beginning to look at that document and um, start updating it. So Trudy, if you're ready, I will switch the screen over yep. to you. Um, what I'd like to talk about first before we get to the preservation master plan is kind of the city's um, strategic directions. Um, the city every year along with the budget goes over strategic directions for the city and it is supposed to help formulate where funds are being spent um, concerning uh, the master plan, concerning expenditures needed you know, updates to things such as the Kentlands Mansion. Um, and um, just, I wanted to step back one second before that, and as Chris said, the, the historic preservation um, element of the uh, master plan was adopted in 2007. And um, in kind of looking at it, there might be a little bit of why things didn't get done questions and um, one of the things that happened between the adoption of the historic preservation element is that we changed the total format um, of the way that the historic preservation ordinance is is worded and we converted from having a historic preservation advisory committee to a historic district commission that consisted of citizens and not the mayor and city council. And, and that took um, a good two years after the adoption of the uh, master plan. And, and also, we've had four different historic preservation planners. And so um, we've had to kind of start all over three times um, mm -hmm. since uh, Pat Petula's retirement. So, um, just, I wanted you to keep that in mind as, as we start reviewing the, the historic preservation element. But back to the strategic direction, if you can turn your attention to the screen, uh, we're going to just talk about um, the strategic direction process related to historic preservation objectives. Every year, as I stated, the city, as part of the budget process, does a strategic plan and the mayor and city council looks at these at their annual retreat in January. Uh, of course, this is prepared by the staff and then approved by them. And so there's one for every year. And basically, there it's broken down. There's the mission and vision of the city. And then there are the guiding principles of the city that, that, that have been adopted. They've been tweaked from time to time over the years. Um, but these are some of those, and certainly this document is available if you click on the budget in, on our city's website, and there's a, a link to the strategic directions. Each, um, right now there, I didn't count, the, but these are all the strategic directions there, and a lot of them sort of go into certain departments, and some Cross departments. <coughs> the four items that are in blue are ones that we have items in that relate to historic preservation. And each of the strategic directions is broken down into key strategies, and then each of the key strategies is broken down to objectives. So 
I'm not going to go over all of them, but in our planning and development strategic directions, um, the second key strategy is to encourage all development in the city to be of high quality and aesthetically appealing while adhering to the city's objectives for sustainable growth. And that gets broken down to these five objectives um, in keeping that strategy. And then the second part, or the third part of the um, each strategic direction is the action items. And what I'd like to do, I'm going to go through action items that relate to the Historic District Commission's review of, of items. As you know, the, the Commission reviews um, properties that are designated historically, whether uh, federal, federally on the National Register, um, whether and whether they're locally. And we also have certain properties that we look at, such as we did with identity that's in the Old Town area. And so in the economic development action items, uh, one of the things that we're working on is the Old Town Park Plaza project. And that, once um, the design is completed, well, it's not completed, but you will have an opportunity to review that as part of the Historic District Commission. And also, um, we are, uh, the city's working on pursuing lighting enhancements in Old Town. Um, all, right now we're focusing on East Diamond Avenue in Old Town. And that's something that, that, that you will hear about as, as we bring the Park Plaza project to you. Um, and um, one of our members is, is on the Park Plaza project design. So we're keeping, um, I'm on the committee and also, um, why do names go out of my head? <laughs> Philip Wessel's on the committee, so. Um, under infrastructure and facilities action item, these are the three items that are um, relate to historic structures. One is the, the Crown Farm um, outbuildings, um, some of which unfortunately burned down. Uh, but that is something that keeps Chris busy when we're looking at that or we're working with um, our facilities people to protect those, what we have. And certainly you were well involved with the, uh, also on Crown Farm, the, the house and the, the barn rehabilitation. Um, the smokehouse uh, is under um, work and the Kentlands Mansion ADA is, most of that is interior work. Um, so, but if there's any exterior work, certainly that will be brought to you. Um, also is the Consumer Product Safety Commission site, which is former the former um, control site for the Nike missile site. Um, Chris is on the, um, committee that has, the ad hoc committee that has just been formed um, to look at um, preparing a park and one of one of the um, items in the historic preservation um, master plan is to work on making something there that will talk to the history of of the control site with the, and hopefully when we obtain finish obtaining the missile site, then we will do something to um, honor the history of those sites. Um, there's roof replacement of City Hall, and, and Chris is working with them concerning um, a different slate product. Under Parks, Recreation, and Culture Action items, there are things that kind of dovetail with something that, some that we've already talked about which is the, the Consumer Product Safety Commission site. And then also the um, community museum complex uh, with the bud car and the caboose and the plaza enhancements, which we talked about under economic development. Under 
the planning and development action items. We have update the historic preservation ordinances, evaluate the historic district commission rules of procedure, and prepare the draft plan, which we are going to talk about tonight. As you know, we completed the rules of procedure in September. And then the uh, next item is to produce a report studying the economic costs and benefits of historic preservation on redevelopment in the city. Uh, this is um, something that, that Chris has recommended that we do. It's um, extremely important as we pass the mark for many houses are now 50 years or older within the city. So um, we hope this will help uh, the Historic District Commission um, work with the city leaders as far as um, types of preservation that we should be doing. And that's it. So, so with the in, I'm going to turn it over to Chris to start a discussion about the uh, master plan. But I just wanted you to get that update of how we are weaving um, items from the master plan into action items for the city. Judy, may I ask you a quick question? Absolutely. Um, the smokehouse, um, how is that being saved? Do you have an idea about the, the woodwork, what they're doing to it? I will pass it on to Chris. Okay. They had some rotting wood close some. to the ground, yeah. yeah. So they are Lots. replacing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're replacing uh, completely, or they're going to be? They're trying to retain as much as possible. Okay. But yeah. Okay. They plan to do that in the spring. Okay, so back on the main screen, these are the five objectives that are included in the 2007 Historic Preservation element, element of the Master Plan. And we thought that they were still relevant and we could still use this as the basis um, going forward with our update. So tonight we were hoping to focus on objective one and come up with action items underneath objective one and in future meetings, we'll go through um, the other objectives. And we're certainly open to adding additional objectives than what is listed here. But we thought that they formed a good basis for, for um, updating the master plan. So if anyone has any ideas or comments on what can be added as a specific action item under objective one. And I'll give an idea of what was there in the 2007 element. I believe there was an action item on um, making sure that elements of the historic districts are retained, such as the sidewalks and the setbacks and the tree growth and, and elements like that. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the difficulties with this is that objective one encompasses the very reason for our existence. So almost <laughs> anything that walks through the door is going to qualify. Right. Yeah, we go very vague until until we get to you know much more specific. It's hard to. Or, I mean, one thing is to actually look at it and see if there's any changes you want to make to that objective. Hmm. As far as I'm concerned, it, it hits it right on the head. Yeah. Our action is what we do. <laughs> Can you give an example of what you mean by it? An action, a specific action item related maybe, to maybe one thing <clears throat> have we decided as a group this is something we should talk about eventually how much involvement we want in actually acquiring asking working on designating properties that we know deserve historic designation and have not yet come before us or have come before us and we haven't pursued it any further. Would that be an action for number one? Uh, yes, I think that would that can fall underneath that category. On the um, main screen, I pulled up the existing master plan so you can see what was listed 
back in 2007 is action items under yeah. objective one. Unfortunately, they didn't put bullet points. Yeah. So it's, um, no. <laughs> it, it looks like one paragraph, but it's really okay. one, minutes, two, yeah. seven items. Mm -hmm. I think they came up with bullet points in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> it was a year later. <laughs> that would make sense. That sounds like guidance to me. Like, for instance, when it says preserve resources in conjunction with the Old Town Master Plan, whatever possible, that tells me that something in Old Town comes before us that our guidance is to preserve resources. These line items, these boats seem like they still apply. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. see anything that would, I mean, the one thing that uh, Mary Jo indicated with the trying to designate more properties, I think that would only apply to city-owned properties. To do it doesn't only apply to that, but it's a good place to start. Yeah, be, I, I mean it's difficult to force. I wouldn't. Our hands on I wouldn't at this time. I would not support forcing anyone, but I would definitely support encouraging. But. Again, we should start with city on properties. That would make the most sense. That'd probably take a good long time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be the next uh, next update at the time. <laughs> Maybe new commissioners before we get any further than that. Who knows? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm reading through these. I don't see anything that's I would consider obsolete by any means. No, they all seem to be very current. Um. On the third one about the Old Town Heritage District, is that still relevant? You think? Mm. Now what? What is the proposed Old Town Heritage District? I don't know. It sounds like a cool thing, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I think I, I know what this is. Gosh, that was a long time ago. I want to say that there was a proposed idea that if more commercial development was to go on in Old Town, that possibly an Old Town Heritage District could be formed and historic homes could be moved to it. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. it's I know it sounds, yeah, it was talking about relocation so that Old Town could become more of a downtown, but we wouldn't demolish all the old structures in Old Town. Now, whether that still fits in. So, yeah. so that, that's what I want to say that is though. That's saying move uh, there was a concept existing at one time. homes that are under pressure for development. But then that opens up a big can of worms for the city because the city would have to purchase those homes Come on. and land to put it on. Yeah. yeah see, maybe so maybe you strike that. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, mean, yeah. I think the first sentence of that bullet, bullet I don't think the Old applied. Town Heritage District was anything more than a concept and doesn't have any place in this document anymore. Is there any further further into the master plan from 2007, was there any uh, further description of the Heritage, Heritage District? I, I haven't seen anything yeah. about that. I guess I've been around a long time. <laughs> That's why that's you're good. wonderful. That's, well, that's great. I, yeah, we'll, that's we'll what look that into is. it. We'll certainly look into it, and we'll that's look into is. look into the old town master plan, okay. which had been done in two thousand five. But mm -hmm. I mean, one of the ideas I know that we thought about. Wow, it's really boring. Um, at that time, we were talking about subdividing, like for instance, the the identity lot. And That's moving right. houses to the possibility That's of right. we were looking at moving um, houses the would be excuse me yeah. the houses would be on the back of those lots facing teachers' way. Mm -hmm. So instead of a demolition, the house would possibly be moved to a back lot, and teachers' way would have possibly houses and mixed buildings. So the intention would be to make diamond more dense with commercial structure. Uh, yeah, it would be too too. 
buildings to each lot. Instead. Actually, take, maybe taking some of the houses from some lots. And we talked about it with when Archstone was being yes. developed and some of those houses we had wanted to to move to preserve especially the um, the house that belonged to the um, undertaker right yeah. and had yeah. to been turned into a law office the possibility of moving that but. well, well I, I think that's a wonderful idea but my question is why uh, does the public domain have to pick up that tab why wouldn't it be the private developers well or? certainly we would I mean there was the um, I think it was their barn. That's exactly right. Yeah. Over on 355, who came up with the proposal, I don't think they ever went further with it, but they were going to relocate that house to develop mm -hmm. the corridor, yeah. which we all thought was a great idea mm -hmm. uh, and still do. I, I Until we later found out it was a Taco Bell going in there. <laughs> but, but, well, that, I, would, I didn't have any concern with that because you know what? There are plenty of uh, fast foods along that part True. of the corridor. I think it's in keeping with what's going on there I personally I know a lot of people may disagree with me but that's okay um, I like the idea that it was saving the house with yeah. with uh, private funds and that's really my point mm -hmm. and I believe and I'm also can't remember a name off the top of my head for some reason it's a lovely gentleman who's an attorney who owned the a lovely young, attorney <laughs> yes he was lovely um, who owned the property the historic property that was demolished Make Mr. Clifford. Fun. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clifford. And um, he tried to work it out with one of the landowners. So this was something that was going to go on privately, but had approval from, I believe it was the HPAC back at that time that, yes, you know, try to work this out if you can. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like I said, this heritage district it's really more of an ideal for my recognition. I don't remember another. Well, we might want to. Yeah. You, you well, we'll do some research on that and yeah. uh, I mean, it's, I come think back it, on, on yeah, that one. That kind of speaks to an, a more, um, I guess, global idea um, of whether or not um, diamond becomes a denser commercial. Um, um, setting as opposed to where, where it is now, east of Summit or south of Summit. Um, I don't know. If that's part of the was part of the thinking back then. It sounds like that was part of more of the thinking back then. I don't hear about it as much now in terms of development back down there. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had some different economic booms and slides mm -hmm. since then too so let's look it's taken a while for the Y site to start building yep yeah. so and then we had an issue over at Crown Farm too where a company went belly up mm -hmm. wow. and wow. so it, that's why all this takes a long time yeah I mean is the is I guess part of the objective of the master plan is to is to look at at that to some degree or is that in our purview to how does how does that actually work with the development of the master plan for historic preservation um, when it comes to things like future developments well the, certainly they they need to comply with all the guidelines that the master plan all the elements each project should be looking at all you know like they don't just look at land use, they look at transportation, uh, historic preservation, environmental element, all of those. So they, they need to all be addressed. So if there is a resource on a piece of property, we would certainly say, okay, how are you meeting the objectives of the master plan of the historic element? Um, did anybody want because it seems like we were on objective one does uh, does anybody want to go to two or three because I have a thought on three but I don't want to leapfrog are we looking to try to hit them all tonight or uh, we were just we can just do as many or as few as you would like um, 
since we don't have a full board, perhaps it'd be best to wait till everyone's here. But if you if you have something you'd like to talk about now, yeah, yeah, I would say since you have an idea on three, let's go ahead and look yeah. at. Well, uh, objective three is to me probably one of the most important parts of um, um, our being. That is tourism. Um, all of the great historic places thrive because of tourism. Mm -hmm. That helps do many things. Obviously, it brings money into the city, which probably is the number one thing that we need. Any city needs that. You have to grow. You have to, you have to be lively. Um, so that's critical. But it also, um, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful cycle, is that uh, the more money that comes in, to the city, the more the city has to preserve. So it, it, it feeds on each other. So I'm, I'm big on tourism. So if there are any things that we can do to increase tourism, I think it's a win-win all the way around. And so I like the idea of the historic plaque program. Um, but We actually I'm, did that. Yeah. And that was implemented and also, you know, the Latitude Observatory I really. I love the observatory yeah. now. Oh, yeah. that, that park, they did a great job. You guys did a great mm -hmm. job with that, renovating it. It was stunning. It's stunning. And those are the type of things that do draw crowds in, do draw people in. I, I love the observatory. Um, but I'm, my, my suggestion is to continue that concept and have perhaps uh, not just a plaque, but um, uh, lack of a better term, embellish the concept of a plaque, have uh, bigger plaques or more of them, or freestanding. Uh, one of the things that, one of the reasons I'm saying this is a colleague of mine uh, saw uh, that I was um, on the HDC and decided to come to Old, to Old Town to, to see it, and she couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> So um, one of the things I'm thinking of is perhaps bigger signage, um, more monumental, at least uh, an entryway um, uh, into the main, into the main uh, uh, roadway. Because um, we do have the signs, they're there, but you know, mm -hmm. as you're driving, uh, I'll say 35 miles an hour along the road, you may pass them, and she certainly did. And, and you do have to look for them. So I would think it would be nice to have something of sorts that um, puts its place, you know, on the map, literally, makes it more um, visible. Um, there's, there's several places that are actually gateways, you know, into the historic area. Several cities have that. Um, I remember Baltimore's Little Italy has the, that painting right on the, on the building, and that's mm -hmm. certainly imageable. Something of that nature. So uh, th th those are my thoughts on it. It would be nice to have something visual that people know where to begin. And I totally agree with that. I was very disappointed about us, the city, not taking on possibly celebrating the 150th anniversary during the Civil War mm -hmm. when the Confederate troops came mm -hmm. through and all of that. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be a great opportunity. And at the time, most of the board members and the city staff felt that that should be a citizen group should do it. Mm -hmm. um, and of course it never happened. Mm -hmm. So we missed that chance to have reenactors and I thought, you know, we could do something similar to Old Town Day except over there on the Summit Hall Farm Park property. You know, obviously the pool's there and some other things, but you can have fast food vendors and people like Civil War reenactments. They go all the time. And so I thought that was a missed mark. And then, while we're at it, I'll mention that I think the Father McCutty Bridge is so bland and so plain it does nothing to welcome people to Gaithersburg. Even though truly I know our boundaries right after the underpass there, um, right where Rockville and Gaithersburg begins, there's no real, you have entered Gaithersburg. A sense of place. It, it, it's a sense of place and time, exactly. Yeah, um, and even though we have the Casey Barnes and some other mm -hmm. things that are tucked away, uh, yeah, yeah. kind of missed the mark on that. Yep. Basic city, basic uh, urban design are, are a few different uh, um, elements define it, and, and paths, um, uh, landmarks, um, nodes, uh, those type of things are, are very critical, exactly. uh, and, and the districts to define them so you can see where you are, know that you're in a, a place. Yeah. Visual uh, landmarks, like even mm -hmm. though Roy's place wasn't historic, it was a visual landmark, now it is not. So, yeah. Definitely, I agree. One of the things maybe we could put on here is 
and we're working on making an interactive map on the website so they oh, like it's yeah. an interactive touring site mm -hmm. of historically designated how That's does that wonderful. translate to like cell phones for instance can you do because a you could go to cell phone, right? yeah you could you yeah. would be able to you can get the city's website on your cell phone right. and go to the mapping applications That's a great idea. Um, great. we're mm -hmm. um, just starting to to be trained and to learn about um, the new Esri and um, Microsoft mapping tools and stuff like that. So that'd be great. And then maybe we could we could do something where sort of like a barcode. You know, the phones can do that. You mm -hmm. can scan something and then be interactive right. with you. That's great. Right. Excellent idea. I think one of the interesting things about Gaithersburg Old Town, especially, is. Uh, you can, as you're traveling from Germantown to Rockville or Rockville to Germantown, you can avoid Old Town easily. And um, I try to be careful to be on the right side of the train tracks, whatever that is for the business I'm doing. So yeah. that sometimes is necessary to plan. What side do you want to be on? Yeah, yeah it's, and it's, um, whether, I mean, in some, de some degree, it actually creates it more of a, a specific downtown area, but in some regards, it makes it less of a, a destination. Mm. It makes it harder to find. That, yeah. that, that, yeah. that I agree with. I think that is something to think about. No, I do have to report as uh, I enjoy very much going to the train station coffee shop, and I have witnessed multiple visitors with their children, their grandchildren, eating there, enjoying it, going over to a little train station, little ones sitting at all, looking at the nice big car there. And the other day when I was there, a train was coming by and I heard a mom say, do you want to see a real train? Do you want to see a real a train? Real so right. people yeah. are going. Mm -hmm. That's you know, yeah, masses, but I think they the, are going. I think the, um, probably when this was done, um, they were just transitioning over to the city running that museum whereas before it was run by volunteers. Oh, okay. And so um, the Parks and Recreation Department has, and the city have put a number, a lot of funding into enhancing that and having, um, they have talks, Tuesday talks, they have um, things on Thursday during the day for preschoolers and um, so there's a, it's really um, come a long way. That's all I've got. <laughs> now I do have a side note off subject. Now that the Y side is being developed, it was really dark driving down Old Town Avenue tonight, and I'm like, oh, we need some more street lights. <laughs> I, mean, I assume that will come as part of the yeah the construction. Yeah. I assume that's I hope so. The <laughs> development has to has to normally yeah. provide lighting. But yeah, it is dark right now. It's bad. That's it. Okay, I think that, you know, we'll continue. If you want to continue, send us any emails about this and we'll we'll talk about again, go back over these objectives at our next Oh, meeting. I definitely think we should because we would like to have everyone, I think, mm -hmm. get yes. a chance to weigh sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> but it would have been wrong to miss the opportunity tonight. That's right. That's all the updates? stuff. I don't have any more that's staff any, updates. That's you all. <laughs> any anyone? Nope. Well, Do I hear a motion? To make a motion. <laughs> I move that we close the meeting for this evening. <clears throat> Do we have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sure. <clears throat>